Hi guys, Asperger's Growth here, and today's video we are talking about how to tell whether someone has Asperger's. So that will include all of the kind of signs that you can look out for, some of the things that they might say to you. Um, but yeah, so funny thing is, I have actually recorded this video twice before. The first time I had my my mic here, not in my hand, it was all the way on the desk, and the noise gate made that meant that all the audio was like all choppy and stuff. And then the second time, I'll probably insert a little clip here. Um, I didn't actually plug my mic into the computer, so. Uh, just buffoon, buffoon, actually buffoon. So without further ado, here are the reasons, the, uh, without further ado, here are some of the ways that you can tell if someone has Asperger's syndrome. Passing is where someone who has autism or is on the autistic spectrum tries to pass as someone who isn't autistic or a neurotypical which is the kind of kind of lingo that you can use um so basically this is suppressing traits like stimming which is like repetitive movements that um kind of calm us down as well as certain thought patterns that we may have psychologists generally try to integrate us more into society and while i do think that is a good thing um i am kind of a little bit against that but i'll get that on i'll go on to that on another video so this passing uh we don't do it completely well our attempts to kind of act like we don't have autism usually don't work very well so we usually have it can be perceived that we have quite weird quirky traits that usually you would just kind of accept as something to do with you know, you're like, oh, he's just a just a weird, quirky, funny person, you know. But um, although that is a good thing, I think it's a good thing because boring is weird. Boring is weird. Weirdness is not weird. Um, <laughs> so these weird traits can manifest itself as different mannerisms, maybe different facial expressions when they're talking about something that's not really related to that facial expression. So like, they could be like talking about something sad and have like a smiling look on the face or um they could be they could actually be quite interested in you romantically or as a friend but they might act like they're not because you know we don't really tend to know how to how to convey that to, in certain points of our life especially when you're younger another thing that you can look out for is physical traits so it can be anything from fidgeting so usually when we're growing up we have these things called stimming so my stimming was spinning around in a circle constantly whenever I could and, and yeah so um, psychologists and parents and stuff they obviously it's they kind of want to get rid of that uh, I don't agree with that because I think it's quite helpful but we usually tend to take on things like fidgeting like stuff that that is stimming but maybe not as powerful but is more socially acceptable like uh, I just do this really gross thing where I rub my fingers together and like get all the dead skin off it's it's a bit gross, uh, but but yeah, anything like that, anything like tapping your feet, spinning, having to spin something in your arms. I know there's there's like these fidget spinners now, which are actually made for people with um, learning disabilities and attention disorders and stuff. So that's kind of the one of the things that you could you could look out for. Another thing is looking at their social tendencies. So if they regularly attend. Um, social events or not regularly attend them but when they attend social events they might leave maybe halfway through when everyone's like getting t together and stuff or it can manifest itself as when you go into like a restaurant or something they may want to sit in the corner they may want to sit at the far for outside of the uh, circle when you're having a conversation any of those avoidance behaviors i don't know if that's a a good word to use for it but there's some things that you can look out for another thing that is actually well uh, documented in <laughs> documented in people that don't happen there in people who have Asperger's is obsessions so these are special interests that basically are something that you really in this person's really interested in they may do something called monologuing where they'll talk for ages and ages about a certain subject because they're interested in it 
maybe not let you talk, which might be quite annoying. Um, as well as spending quite a hefty amount of time look, reading around that subject, doing stuff to do a bit. So, for example, when I was really obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh, which is a trading card game and also an anime, I'd used to watch it all the time whenever I could. I used to listen to the music from t from the show. I used to listen to like audio books <laughs> on Yu-Gi-Oh, um, make decks and stuff during the day, and like play them with my dad at the end of the day. So these things are, that is something that you can look out for. Um, it's, it's usually like said as something that's not good, but I, I kind of view them as more of like a passion. So for example, my passions now are, you know, university, uh, taekwondo, um, exercise, stuff like that, and especially YouTube videos. So there are some, some things that might be more characterized in people who have autism. Referring, re referencing something that you do not know about. So if they tend to say stuff um, to do with a certain subject that you might not know about it and like laugh about it and make another reference for it, they may kind of, kind of like humoring themselves over it. So for example, if you are talking about, I don't know, cars, and they, they've recently watched a video about cars, they, they'll make like a really vague reference about it and start laughing about it and you'll be, you'll be left like, Wait, what? What are you talking about? And you know, that's the kind of quirkiness that you could, that is seen in people who have Asperger's. Not everybody, everyone's different, we've all got different brains, um, but that is something. Stranged or mixed facial expressions. So I have touched on this a little bit in passing, but strange or mixed facial expressions are as a result of these social ten social inbuilt mechanisms that we don't have uh, or maybe don't have as well developed when we are younger so it takes a lot of focus for us to have a good social conversation so we'd have to think about the facial expressions that we have when we're talking to someone we'd also have to think about what we're talking about and listening to them and also filtering out things in the background so it takes a lot of energy to talk to people in general and we usually don't aren't able to multitask that well with it facial expressions and body language and stuff may not be actually telling of how the person what the person is talking about and how the person is feeling so it, i said before about them maybe talking about something sad and smiling it can be the opposite they could be talking about something that's really um, happy and they could just have a blank, fa blank face or they may have a monotonous facial expression just in general. Um, it tends to dissipate a bit when you get older but it does still occur. And sarcasm. Sarcasm is really cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I... It's, a general trait of someone who has autism is taking everything literally. So we, we filter out these social things, these changing tones, changing facial expressions, changing body language, because we, we don't particularly understand them without completely focusing on them. So this sarcasm is saying something in a certain way with maybe a certain facial expression in a certain scenario. It can be quite confusing for someone who has autism. I personally really like sarcasm. Um, my dad is probably one of the most sarcastic people out there and it's really funny but I know his mannerisms and I know when he's being sarcastic however when someone else does it who doesn't usually use sarcasm I always have to ask are you being sarcastic even though I can tell there's a little bit of change in their voice but if they generally are a bit confused when you say something sarcastic or they ask whether you're being serious or not that might be another sign but however I find it very frustrating because some people they say something sarcastic when they mean it to be partly um, true for, for partly partly not sarcastic as well and that, that really screws in my head so if you do that please stop doing that is really it's really annoying um, it's not that annoying but you know exaggeration being bad at small talk 
people of autism may not like small talk. I think it's really boring. I can do it. Um, I generally don't like to ask. I don't like to do small talk because if I'm not interested in the answer to something, I find it very boring. I don't want to ask the question. But if you want to get to know people in this society, you need to ask them kind of thing. So you go to someone, oh, hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Um, what course at uni do you do? Um, at what year are you in? That kind of stuff. Where, where are you living? Um, they may not be very comfortable with doing something like that or may just find it quite boring. Another thing is not understanding social concepts. So these can be uh, things like uh, dating, friendships, family, the kind of set things in society that we have and we abide by. So like, oh, you, you love your family all the time. I'm not saying that I don't love my family because I really do, I think they're great. But I, I generally, when I was younger, I generally struggle to find the, the line between relationships and friendships with people so that would result in me friend zoning a lot of people and also the opposite having when I think you know this person is interested in me but they're not um I know people in general have difficulty with that but I I find I think it's something that maybe autistic people may struggle with more so if the, if you find that they're a bit hard to tell what what their motivation is in a certain scenario that might be something to look for but definitely ask them because you know you don't know with someone who has Asperger's unless they tell you because we don't give any social cues or little behind the scene kind of messages it's um, not something that we generally do intelligence or excelling at a one singular or two or three subjects in particular now this can be due to interest but there is studies that have been put out showing that people with Asperger's have a higher level of intelligence than the regular person now it doesn't mean that we're extra 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 super smart like Einstein level but it does mean that we generally have a high level of intelligence so if they are excelling in a certain subject or they're very interested in a certain subject at school that might be another trait but also there's different things in our language and our way of communicating that you might be able to look for especially when we are younger um, one of the things that was shown that is that we may use more um, trying to think of the word see this this is what I'm talking about like vibrant dialogue rather than you see I could have just said conversation or talk or something um, so this can be anything from saying um, you're getting weaker um, what rather we might say something like it's hindering my performance or something um, that might be something to look out for as well as our accent so I'm from Yorkshire I do have a little bit of Yorkshire in my accent um, but generally people won't be able to tell whether where I'm from because um, we usually tend to put on more of a a different kind of accent um, I've definitely seen it in some other people who have Asperger's uh, it doesn't happen with everybody but that is something that um, you can look out for if they have some kind of like a little bit more of a posh accent for where they're, where they're from or you know just kind of a w weird accent or something I don't know yes. look out for it you'll be, able to, you'll be able to know what I mean so we're nearly about to wrap up the video uh, one of the, the last things is not being able to concentrate on things when there is a lot of background noise so if you tend to meet up with a person um, in parks or in busy bars or like public or anything like that if you find that after maybe half sorry about half an hour ugh, um, if you find that it's hard they kind of drift off or like start daydreaming about halfway through the conversation it's hard for us to filter out sensory stimulation so anything like bright lights noises different touch sensations and stuff like that it overrides our ability to concentrate on a single person so just imagine just all of the the background noise and everything as well as the person's voice melded together it's going to be hard for us to concentrate 
we can do this for a certain amount of time, but then again, it drains our energy a lot. So we might tend to, um, our concentration might tend to wane um, at certain points. So if you find the person that you're talking to kind of generally doesn't, sometimes doesn't seem like they're interested or maybe starts getting anxious or something in public situations, that might be another sign to look out for. Okay, so the last thing is, well, second to last thing is rudeness. Um, as I said before, it's hard for us to grasp certain social con concepts and rules. We tend to we tend to come across across maybe more rude and polarizing when we're when we're younger. Generally, because we we don't think as much of how the other person might react to something that we say. So I remember when I was when I was younger um, with my friends, they'd they tell me to like swear at one of the 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 other kids. Um, this was like when I was like six or seven or eight or something. And I just like straight out just in the middle of scouts, not scouts, beavers or something like that. It was one of those adventure type um, clubs. And I just called them all bitches just many times in a row because I didn't know what it meant. And then when I was told off for it and said that it was a bad word, I wouldn't understand because, you know, why would you? It's only a word. Why would you get upset about that? So. I'm not saying that you should compromise for someone's rudeness if they're an asshole. Tell them. Um, don't kind of not do anything about it if someone if someone with Asperger's or autism has a go at you or says something that might have offended you or something. Tell them. Um, obviously, if they don't do anything about it, you know, just ditch them because they're obviously an asshole. But it may might be easier to get. To trigger people when you're artistic, so just kind of take that into take that into mind when you when you're talking to someone. The last thing is the if you are talking to someone and they usually say things like, "Oh, I didn't really fit in at school very much," or "I was bullied a lot at school," um, or "I have bad memories at school. I didn't like school very much." There is a higher rate of bullying. With people with Asperger's as well as autism in school, especially when we're younger, the lack of ability in social situations is really like you can really tell. This is why it's easier to diagnose someone when they're younger, because these symptoms symptoms don't like that word. Uh, these qualities are more prevalent in people that age, and therefore they're more likely to be bullied because people bully people based on differences in, in personality and stuff like that especially when they're younger kids so if they have said anything about being bullied or being not understood very well that might be a good sign that they might have had autism had autism have autism so this has been how to tell whether someone has asperger's or not i know this has been quite a long video uh, i i made a really good shoot the first time that i made this video um, which really annoyed me because I didn't get that right. But hopefully this one's kind of okay. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah. So if you like the video, make sure to click like to let me know that you like it. Or click dislike if you didn't like it. But I'd rather you post a comment, give me some constructive criticism about how I could better improve the video for next time. Also, don't be afraid to post a comment and ask for a a certain video request, maybe about something that you might be confused about or something that you want me to talk about. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see any more content from me in the future and click the little bell button in the corner, I think it's over there, so that you get notifications when my stuff goes out. You might want to check out my new social media pages that I've made. It's at Asperger's Growth for Google+, Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to look into my daily life, maybe something that isn't to do with my YouTube channel. Make sure to check, check out my Instagram account, Thomas Henley TKD. That's T-H-O-M-A-S-H-E-N-L-E-Y-T-K-D. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you guys are having a great day.